Hi everybody, I'm Ken Davenport, a Tony Award-winning Broadway producer. And for the past 13 years, I've been on a mission to help writers, directors, actors, and theater artists of all kinds get their shows produced. In fact, I recently started a campaign to help 5,000 shows get produced by 2025. So I'm here today to give you a tip to help you get your show up on a stage. So one of the most common questions I get from people looking to get their shows produced, especially when they're just starting out, is how do I raise money? Maybe it's for a reading or a festival or even an off-Broadway or Broadway production. This is where so many of the writers and other artists I work with don't know where to start or who to turn to. And this can be pretty depressing because you need money, right? It's the most uncomfortable subject to talk about and you don't know how to get it. I know exactly what that's like because I felt the same thing when I was just getting started. So maybe this is you, right? You have a script or an idea you know is a great one if you could just get it off the ground. And maybe you're confused, discouraged, frustrated, overwhelmed, or simply don't know what to do when it comes to raising money. Well, I'm going to help you out with a very simple exercise that I did when I started raising money and I promise you it worked like gangbusters. You ready? So here you go. Take out your phone, find the timer, and I want you to set 15 minutes on the clock. And when you hit start, in those 15 minutes, I want you to write the names of as many people as you can who you can ask for money. Now don't think about it too much. If a name comes up, just write it down fast. Start with friends and family and former bosses, current bosses, mentors, and just keep going wider and wider with your net. Your goal should be to get to 100 names in 15 minutes. Now I know what you're thinking, Ken, I don't know 100 people who could give me money. That's not what I said. I said write down 100 names of people you can ask for money. Now that's a big difference and a crucial part of this exercise. See, I don't want you thinking about a name and judging whether someone could give you money or not. I don't want you saying to yourself, oh, Aunt Alice, well, she just got a divorce, so she probably can't invest, or my brother Tim just got laid off, there's no way, he's broke, blah, blah, blah. Now, all of that stuff may be true, and Aunt Alice may not end up giving you any money, but that's not your job in this exercise right now. You're just gonna come up with a list of anyone you know who you can ask for money. You got it? Now, before you start, let me explain why we're creating this list this way. There are two reasons, and they are just a few of the fundamentals of raising money. Just like dribbling and passing are fundamentals of basketball, these are two of the most important skills successful money raisers have. And if you master these, you will get to your goal. So number one, the first fundamental, successful money raisers ask everybody for money because you never know who's gonna give you money or not. Let me repeat that, you never know. In fact, let me tell you a story about one of my investors, a big one, like a seven-figure investor. The first time I met him, I never in a million years thought that he could invest that kind of money in a show. In fact, if you were sitting next to him on the subway, and that's where he'd be, by the way, on the subway, not in a fancy limo or anything, even though he could own a fleet of them, You'd never guess it either. He'd be in a t-shirt and jeans and shoes with a hole in them and drinking a Dunkin' Donuts coffee because he thinks Starbucks is too expensive. Lucky for me, when I met him, I didn't prejudge that book by its cover. And because I obeyed fundamental number one, ask everyone, I found one of my largest and most frequent investors. You always ask because you never know. Or as I like to say, don't say no for people, let them say no to you. Now, coming up with reasons why people won't invest is actually just your fear of asking doing the talking. So acknowledge it for what it is, fear, and then just ask everybody, okay? Now, number two in the raising money fundamentals, if they do say no, and most will, so get used to it, if they do say no, don't stop there. You're not done. If they say no, or even if they say yes, you're gonna ask one of the most important and magical questions there is. Do you know anyone else that might be interested? That's right, you're gonna ask for a referral just like a real estate agent or a fundraiser for a charity. Successful raisers always ask for referrals, always. And this is when you're probably saying, but Ken, they said no, they're not gonna to wanna to give me names of their friends. Actually, the opposite is true. 
So there's a very interesting psychological principle at play here that says when someone says no to a request, they are more likely to say yes to the very next request you make. They actually feel guilty. So use that to your advantage and always ask for a referral. Got it? Okay, so you ready? Set that timer, come up with that long list of names, 100, and ask. And then ask for referrals. And if you follow this exercise and learn these important fundamentals, I have no doubt it will get you to your goal. How do I know that? Because it's exactly what I've done and what I do every time I raise money. So thank you for watching. And if you learned something that helps get your show off the ground and hopefully becomes one of our 5,000 by 2025, I hope you'll share this video with others. Because the more shows that get produced, the more theater there is in the world. And the more theater there is in the world, well, I just think that makes the world a better place.